So guys, by now, you're probably aware of Tesla's approach to dominate the EV market. Not only have they been successful in the US, but everywhere they have expanded to all seen a mass adoption rate once this specific model was made available. Now this specific model here is one of the most affordable, the most practical, and the best selling vehicle in the world. And due to the growing popularity of SUVs around the world, it will likely continue to be so for many years to come. So this vehicle, here is the most obvious, it is the Model Y and it is the car that you practically see at every single intersection. However, there are the flip side of things, this isn't as prevalent in many developing countries and even so in many different states outside of the few larger ones that we are used to. It is without question that Teslas are a lot more abundant in places that are more favorable to EVs, especially when the governments are involved providing tax credits. Now, from what I am aware of, and correct me if I'm wrong, but outside of the US and Canada, generally governments are providing subsidies and incentives to a country as a whole. Whereas for the US and Canada, things are quite different. We would have federal, state, and sometimes municipal incentives that further push us towards owning an EV. So depending on where you live in the country, you can take advantage of all these great benefits, tax credits, and incentives and get your Tesla at a reduced price. Now, truth be told, even though the Model 3 and Model Y are considered fairly affordable for most Americans, this is not the case for the rest of the world. And if you have watched my last video on Tesla's recent offering of the slowest Model 3 ever, but priced at over 150,000 US dollars, this is where you'll understand why the world outside of North America is not using them for taxi or turos. So because of this reason alone, we are not seeing higher adoption rates in developing countries, whereas you would in China, Europe, and North America. And although you can see Tesla trying tremendously to expand outside of the main markets, people are still very turned away in developing countries owning an EV purely because of the reasons mentioned. And all of this is not surprising whatsoever. With the average income of about 300 US dollars per month, people are not in a position to buy a Tesla unless the government steps in and provides additional incentives. Alright, so now with the government not budging whatsoever, it is on Tesla's side to make a change and this is exactly what they are doing. But quite the opposite of what you might expect, Tesla is going to be soon offering a soft performance limit unlock. Now, from what we know, this is going to be available for the new Model Ys and Model 3s and are going to be catered towards those earlier markets that I have mentioned. This is going to boost the popularity and give some additional incentives to buying this vehicle. According to well-known hacker Green the Only who deep dives into code base that's provided by Tesla, this is where we have been given early access to what is going to be coming in the near future. From what it looks like in the codes of the recent software updates, there has been reference to a soft limit performance option that should be available for the Model 3 and Model Y. It goes on to point at two different power outputs, one at 110 kilowatts and the other at 160. This further indicates that there could be two additional variants coming out to newer markets outside of the ones that are available now. And like I have mentioned previously, we have already seen this offering in the Singaporean market and we will likely be seeing more of this in other local markets as well. Now going by what Green has shown us, there could be three different possibilities and outcomes to what has been previewed. One could be that Tesla is planning to unlock additional horsepower to the detuned Model 3s that are available right now. Although this is highly unlikely because of the rules and regulations set out restricting them from doing so, this would likely avoid all the rest of the incentives that are available. The second possibility here could just be the reference to the Model Ys being sold and available in Turkey at the moment. These Model Ys have been specifically detuned to an output of 160 kilowatts. This is to avoid the special consumption rate set out and by the threshold of the government. This would allow vehicles with a power output of under 160 kilowatts to fall within the prior tax bracket allowing the vehicle to be sold much cheaper. However, this would put it into the same scenario as Singapore where the acceleration time has been drastically increased going from 6.9 seconds to now 7.5 seconds for the Model Y rear wheel drive. This is what Turkey customers are going to have to face. 
So then the final possibility here, being that the code has been referenced on a global scale, this could mean that Tesla is going to be creating and offering two additional variants to what we have right now to everybody around the world. And this could mean that it's going to be a lot more affordable and a lot more easier to get for the average buyer. Now what this would ultimately mean is that the adoption rate of the Model Y and the Model 3 is going to be incredible. Everybody can buy it for a much cheaper price up front and if they do decide to take the software unlock feature, this is where it's going to bring the acceleration back up to normal and it's really just a win-win for both sides. Now on top of that, if this were to turn true and there is no government restrictions and limitations set in place because there are no government incentives to begin with, this means that you are going to be seeing a software unlock or an acceleration unlock right within the app. And this is where after you pick up your very affordable Model 3 or Model Y and you do decide to want to unlock, there should be no reason that would stop you from taking the best acceleration. So yeah, like I said, a really big win-win for all situations, especially in those developing countries that Tesla really wants to expand to. This is where you can offer the most affordable vehicles and then allow the customer to decide if they want to really enhance their speed or they just are happy with what they have. Now, what's so cool about this and what makes it so possible is that Tesla has done this before and with Elon recently hinting that they will be providing a battery unlock to previous Model Ys to add an additional 60 miles or about 100 kilometers of range, this is going to be fantastic once this rolls out for the rest of the world. Now, if you want to know more about this additional 60 mile or 100 kilometer of range and if your car qualifies for that, definitely go check out my previous video. I would drop it in the description and up top there. But if you are going to be picking this up, it's going to be coming at around $1,500 and you're going to make your car so much better. I do see Tesla applying the same technique for their future variants of cars. This is where a simple software unlock or what they reference to within the code base as soft limit performance. This is going to be a really big saving grace for a lot of people that really want to get into an EV, specifically a Tesla, and are unable to do so because of the high upfront cost. So yeah. Yeah, there you have it. Even though this is not exactly the performance option that we were hoping for, this is a really big step in the right direction for those countries and those people that really want to own a new Tesla Model 3 or a Model Y. Anyways, this should be it for this video. I will keep you updated with anything else that comes out, even though if they are small or big. So definitely stick around and hit that subscribe button, that bell notification, and follow me on Twitter at HeyJohnE. Over there, you guys can chat with me, DM me anytime, and I will try to respond as quickly as possible. Anyways, this is it. This is John once again. Peace out.